Hey, so warp drive is super hot right now. It is having a moment. You might say it's moving forward at, I'm not gonna do a pun. Let's not, let's just do a cool warp effect and get into the video. Okay, there we go, woo. So it's pretty crazy. I just did a video on a paper that came out last week on subluminal warp drive by Alexi Bobrick and Gianni Martire. People seem to love it, it's been doing really well, and if you wanna watch that, it's linked right up here. In that video, I rely heavily on Sabine Hossenfelder's explanation and video. After all, she is a physicist, and I, after all, am a comedian, so my video had jokes peppered throughout. Most people loved it, others were quite mean about that in the comments, but I refuse to engage. <laughs> Right, this is a video about warp drive. I can't just go around saying words like engage. Okay, so now this even newer paper has come out in the same journal, Classic and Quantum Gravity, detailing superluminal warp speed, so that's faster than light. Two papers in the same journal within weeks. And this is huge because the last paper to make it into this journal was from 1994. Miguel Alcubierre described his Alcubierre drive. And the big problem with that is that it required Facebook levels of negative energy. This is a problem because classical physics can't yet account for the existence of negative energy. These two new papers that have just surfaced both use mathematical models that keep the energy positive. The journal Classic in Quantum Gravity has an extremely high standard of peer review. I recently found out that a lot of people have a lot of ideas about warp drive, but the only place they've been published is in my comments section, which does not have a good system for peer review. By the way, stop thumbs up in your own comments we can tell. Getting published in Classic and Quantum Gravity is like the YouTube equivalent of getting like a billion thumbs up. The author is Eric Lentz, who looks like he's used to getting thumbs ups. Look at this bro. He looks like some sort of quantum physics Superman, staring off into the distance, chiseled jaw. What is he, 22? My pants are warping. His paper on warp drive makes me feel safe. Eric says this work has moved the problem of faster than light travel one step away from theoretical research in fundamental physics and closer to engineering. This is important because in order to get to our nearest star, Proxima Centauri, using chemical rockets would take at least 50,000 years. If we figure out nuclear propulsion, it's still around 100 years, and even at light speed, it would take a hella slow four years. My whole last video was on warp speed below the speed of light. Below light speed warp is boring. It's hard to get excited about the thing we can't do that won't be cool. But Lens has the solution, or soliton, solit, soliton, sol, soliton? Soliton. The paper is called Breaking the Warp Barrier Hyperfast Soliton in Einstein-Maxwell Plasma Theory. If you're wondering what a soliton is, well, me too, and I read up on them for about 20 minutes. Here's what Wikipedia says. In mathematics and physics, a soliton or solitary wave is a self-reinforcing wave packet that maintains its shape while it propagates at a constant velocity. Solitons are caused by a cancellation of nonlinear and dispersive effects in the medium. Solitons are the solutions of a widespread class of weakly nonlinear dispersive partial differential equations describing physical, oh my God, that hurt my brain. Okay, here's how I picture it and feel free to big time me in the comments. You know how when you're watching the ocean and sometimes waves from the shore are going back out and sort of colliding with waves that are coming in and they kind of pass each other and both waves, they move through each other and keep going. That's all I got. I think it's a wave that can keep going after it gets hit by other waves. The key takeaway is that Lenz's solid jawline has come up with mathematical solutions for space-time curvature that use solitons as the mode of organization. It's about creating a space-time bubble that can move through space-time waves without being distorted. It's a way to isolate space-time and control it. 
Unfortunately, the current math suggests its gas tank has to be about the size of Jupiter, which would suck, right? Having to burn up a gas giant every time you want to go somewhere? Climate change deniers are like, just one Jupiter per trip? Psh, let's do it. This is the Freaky Friday part. Going faster than light means you'd get there before your light does. When a spaceship traveling faster than light stops, wouldn't it just appear out of nowhere? And then, as the warp bubble dissipates, wouldn't you see it traveling in reverse to its point of origin? Weird. What should the Star Trek warp drive animation look like? If you want to ask that question to Dr. Eric Strongjaw Lentz, he's going to be live on YouTube on March 18th. You can find me in the chat asking silly questions like that. Find the links to everything I mentioned in the show notes. I'm a comic, filmmaker, and futurist. I do all sorts of videos. Think about subscribing. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys are keeping me afloat, and I promise I've got some great videos coming soon. Find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Discord. Okay, that's it, guys. I hope you found this engaging. If you want free Netflix and Spotify and a free 25 bucks for signing up and a crypto debit card that gives you 3% cash back, the link is in the description.